Okay, so in this video we're going to look at how we can use Ableton Live to start building a set of more than one track that we've downloaded from worshipbackinband.com. So let's open the first song of our set. So let's go File, Open Live Set. I'm going to navigate to my desktop, and there's some tracks that I've downloaded. I'm going to start with Let God Arise. So let's click into Let God Arise and load the ALS file. Again, this is going to load all the tracks that we need, um, ready in our arrangement view, ready to go. Now, as you can see, this song, if I just zoom out a little bit, and I can do that by holding the magnifying glass and dragging, this song is ready to go with everything in, and it's got all the markers ready for us to navigate around. So let's scroll to the end of that song, and you can see that the song finishes on bar 136. What we need to tell Ableton is that actually we want to tempo change there, because we want to slow all of Ableton down, ready to run in time with the next song. So to do that, we're going to come down here to the master channel, and we can access that by clicking this little drop-down button. And under here, we've got mixer, and we've got some functions, and we want to go into song tempo. Now, a little good tip here is to set our shells as our minimum and maximum tempo that we're currently using. So our maximum is for Let God Arise, which is 145 BPM. So let's type in 145 there. And our minimum is going to be the slowest song in our set, which is going to be our next one at the moment, which is You Alone Can Rescue, which I know from looking at that file already is 76 BPM. Fantastic. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called a breakpoint. And to do that, I highlight this red line and I double click. And then I go to the next bar and I double click again. And now I can manipulate that. So actually what I'm going to tell it to do is I'm going to tell it to start slowing down at bar 135. So let's drag that back to bar 135. And I want it to be fully slowed down by bar 136. So let's put 76 on bar 136. Great. Now we're ready to load the track in. So let's go to our browser over here. I'm going to open browser number 3. And I'm going to navigate to my desktop. And on my desktop, I've got You Alone Can Rescue. Now, I don't want to load in the ALS file this time because it'll open up an entire new live set. I just want to load the samples. So let's go into samples and into imported. And the brilliant thing about Worship Backing Band is they always follow the same format. So let's just simply drag the intro file to intro, lead vocal to lead vocal, BVs to BVs, acoustic to acoustic, and so on. And all I'm simply doing is I'm dragging these songs sorry, these stems along into the same tracks on Ableton ready for my next song. Let's drag bass to bass. Drums to drums. Enhanced. Click. Shaker. And cues. Excellent. So there we've got our next song ready to go. So let's just listen to the end of Let God Arise. Stop, drink, or stop. And as that chord rings out, Ableton's going to slow down the tempo, and our next song is ready to start. Fantastic. Now it might be that actually we don't want quite such a big gap at the end of one song going into the next song. That's really easy to do. We simply just move the tempo to where we want it. So let's actually, let's say we want it in at bar 134 this time, which might be a little bit too soon, but let's have a look. So let's move the 145 back to 134. Let's move the 76 to 134 as well. And let's select all of these tracks, and I'm just going to hold down shift and click all of the tracks, and then I'm going to drag them to bar 134, and that's going to be the start of my new song. So let's just see how that sounds. Stop, or stop. And as that chord fades out, we're going to get our next song come in. Piano, two, three, four. Yeah, that's nice, I'm quite happy with that. And you can play around with that for each set to make sure that your transitions are nice and smooth as you see fit. Okay. The next thing we need to do is just add some markers in so we can navigate around that song quite nicely. So I managed to pause that actually just as the verse was coming in, which is on bar 140. So as long as this line is somewhere in that bar, I can hit this little set button here and it's going to put in 
um, a marker. So let's put in a marker here, right at the start of the song, and I'm going to highlight that one, and I'm going to rename that one uh, You Alone, so I know where the song starts. And then if I let that play, And I'm going to highlight set up here. And when I hear the verse come in for you alone, I'm going to press set again and put a marker in. There we go. And if you press it just after, it'll move it back to the start of that bar. Wait for the repeat. And then I'm going to simply rename these. So I'm going to click on that one and I'm going to use a shortcut, which is my command R. And I'm going to type in verse 1. Enter. And I'm going to do the same on the other one. And I'm going to type in repeat. Oh, if I could spell that would help. Repeat verse 1. Great. And you can work your way through the arrangement, adding in the markers as you see fit. We'll come back to markers a little bit later on. But markers is what we'll use to navigate around the song if we want to arrange on the fly. And a good little tip here is if you open up the cue track by clicking the drop down button, you'll hear Andy's voice guiding you into each section. So you know whenever you see this waveform, you're about to go into a new section and you can simply jump there. So let's jump on here and see what he's saying here. This is some tiny look there. And again to you alone. To you alone. Into the link to the link so we can put a link marker in on that bar there and so on great so let's just zoom out a little bit so we've got you alone and we've started to put some markers in now at the end of you alone we might want to put our next song in so again we can do exactly the same format we can go to the end of the song which is here and we can start loading in our next song here by changing the tempo and going into our next song and loading it in so that's how we can start building a set list using the arrangement view. Finally, we need to save that set list so that we're ready to open up that set list with all of our hard work saved. So to that, we go up to File, and we go Save Live Set As, and we tell it where we want it to save it. So I'm going to save that on my desktop, and I'm going to call that Sunday Set List. And press Save. Now, one final thing you need to know about Ableton is although that's going to save the set list, it's actually going to pull in the waveforms from wherever they were last. So we need to make sure that we tell Ableton to collect all of the waves that are being used and save them into that current set list. And to do that, we're going to click File, Collect All and Save. That's going to take a few minutes, but when that's done, that'll make sure that it saves all of the files that we're using into that set list, ready to open up, ready for us to use on a Sunday.